hello, hello everyone, Nick here with What Game Now. Apologies it's taken so long to get this thing out. Um, this is the third time I've had to record this video. Um, the first one was because I got an upgrade mic set, and the other one because we had an audio corruption, so hooray. I'm going to warn you, this video is going to be a little bit long because we're going to knock this out all in one go. We are doing the CEF Army Box, and as you can see here, we have the nice painted one. This is an image from DreamPod 9. All right. So let's start at the beginning, the F616. Now, before I go any further, there's not as much fluff available for these as I would have liked to have when I built this. So some of the commentary you're gonna see here is less the history of the individual model and universe and more the doctrine of the army behind it. And that's gonna help us get a better idea for how things work. And the F616 is a very good example. The F616 is the current standard trooper gear of the CEF. It is actually considered what's called a battle frame, which is the CEF version of heavy gears that they captured during the War of the Alliance. Unlike the Terra Novans, the CEF battle frames do not dominate CEF doctrine. It's still very heavily tanks and infantry. It is worth noting that these can be piloted by humans and I believe Grells, and specifically not flails, and we'll get to what a flail is in a little bit. So these are humans and I believe they're also some Grells. All right, whole bunch of profiles here. Across the board, all of these things are general purpose and fire support. It has no unlimited availability, so that's very interesting. Walker hover movement nine, armor seven, hull structure three, three. One action, gunnery piloting four up, EW four up, although it tends to be a five up on most of the variants. All the variants come with a light combat weapon and the arms trait passively. So what you'll notice here is this is a single model that has a bunch of different variants bunch of different things it can do and you're going to see this all throughout the CEF so instead of saying okay well this is the recon gear almost every gear will have a recon version the question is what does its recon version do in comparison to the other ones initial stat line this thing is armor 7 hull structure 3 3 which is reasonably durable if someone a little bit frail when it gets hit and a walker hover of 9 makes this thing fairly fast it does need to keep up with the hover tanks after all Passive EW 4 to 5 up, depending on the variant, is actually very interesting. It makes this thing a very interesting command variant. Arms trade as per standard. The baseline variant clocks in at 11 points. Interestingly enough, it's actually one of the more expensive variants. It has a light laser cannon and an auxiliary ECM. This is actually a really good pocket EC, um, electronic warfare machine. You'll notice when we get to the recon version that the recon version doesn't really have electronic warfare capability like you might expect in some of the Terra Nova recon units. So this is the closest thing you have to an EW platform. It is auxiliary and at hull structure 3.3, it's a little bit easy to cripple it. Note that it's not agile, so you can be a little bit careful. Although EW 4 plus is pretty good, especially considering you can upgrade that to a 3 plus with the EW, um, EW specialist trait. Light laser cannon is a highly accurate weapon. It does not hit particularly hard. It's strength six, if I recall right, rough top of my head but it's advanced and precise, so it effectively can act like it's strength eight at times. Reasonably good gun, um, has some range issues, and the biggest issue is it's the, the only range weapon it's got. This has no flexibility whatsoever. The next variant is actually the variant I would consider to be the standard version, and that's the anti-tank. So the anti-tank has an EW of five up, but it has a light particle accelerator and some light anti-tank missiles. Um, this is a, so, Limited ammo too on the anti-tank missiles means it's very difficult to put something down because you're gonna run out of ammo. The particle accelerator tends to haywire things. So what I usually find is this is, you have a good spread of options. You have the anti-tank missile for heavy armor. You have the particle accelerator for everything else. And instead of killing big targets, you're going to disable them. Okay, at one point cheaper than the base variant. And I actually quite like this thing. The assault machine, same stat line as the anti-tank. Instead of having the anti-tank missiles and the particle accelerator, it has a rotary laser, and it picks up a shield. So the shield helps with durability. The rotary laser is a very accurate weapon between the burst and the advanced trait. Um, again, if you're going for more generic anti-light armor stuff, this is much better than the F616. The 616 is more consistently accurate, though. And the shield does keep this thing alive a little more often. The recon version, 11 points. Keeps the light laser cannon from before. Has the comms trait, so it makes a decent commander right off the bat. Auxiliary sensors 24, a sensor boom, and a target designator. So a sensor boom basically lets you pop up over terrain and see things, which helps keep you alive. 
you have a target designator, which is going to be very important if you want to use any guided munitions. And sensors 24 in the comm straight means you're going to be fairly reliably pulling off your EWU skills. It's worth noting that this is a recon and observer machine. There's no ECM or anything like that here. The light laser cannon, again, it's that highly accurate hits medium hard but is only one weapon you have no versatility with its offensive loadout lastly we have the support version the support version adds a light guided mortar in exchange for the ecm to the regular version um it's also cheaper for reasons i'm not entirely sure um the ecm is an unfortunate loss this is ecms are not especially common in the cef on the frames although you can get to the command cars and see them Keeps the light laser cannon for a high accurate reasonable damage output weapon, but picks up a guided mortar for some flexibility. The only downside here is it doesn't have react plus, meaning you have to pick the laser cannon or the mortar. 10 points, and eh, you know, it's not bad. Um, of the variants here, I'm quite a fan of the anti-tank. Upgrades, you can upgrade to a command variant. It goes to EW4 up if it's not already EW4 up, and you get a satellite uplink and an ECCM, so defensive electronic warfare capability and a satellite uplink. This is really good on the 616, just the baseline variant. Um, you can put it on the other stuff. I wouldn't put it on the recon because you just don't need it. The recon already has comms, it's fine. The mobility pack as airdrop and a jet pack. Personally, I think this is more cute than good. Um, mostly because if you're going to airdrop something, you want to airdrop something stronger than a 616. And the S upgrade makes it a special forces machine and adds stealth. Another upgrade that I think is more cute than good. All right, next up we have the 219. So this is equivalent to a fire support gear, uh, more akin to the Grizzly than the Cobra. So you're going to see more direct fire support weapons here. It does hover, and it is piloted by a flail. We're not entirely sure what the flail is, but it's highly implied to be a brain in a jar. Interesting note that because of its experimental nature, in universe these things explode if killed. They don't do that in game, but just kind of a fun note. So this got a recent tweak, so forgive the in-progress um, Excel sheet. Um, so this got a, a update fairly recently as of the time of this recording. All of these things are fire support machines, Strike is the assault is available in strike. The uh, recon is available in, in recon. You'll notice a very similar trend here with you have an anti-tank version, an assault version, and a support version. This is the thing about the CEF. You're going to have a machine. It's going to have a variant that can do a, a variant for every role instead of purpose-built machines like you would see on Terra Nova. All right, Walker Hover 7. So reasonably fast and hovers pretty good for your mobility. Armor 8, Hull Structure 4-2. Puts it on par with like a Grizzly and a Kodiak. One action, gunnery four up, piloting four up. That's a big deal for a gear like this. It actually makes it more durable than you would think. Um, because most e most stuff like this tends to be piloting five up. EW five up, okay. Um, it's worth noting that there is no command version of this. You do have the recon. Um, and there is an ECM version, so, I mean, okay. All of the variants come with a medium rocket pack, or, well, most of them do and a medium combat weapon, and usually some form of anti-tank missile. Has the arms, ANN, React Plus, and ECM trait. Okay, going through here. Arms, you can react, congratulations. ANN, pick a single one of your characteristics, increase it by one at the start of your activation, and I believe it lasts for the round of the activation, I have to go look. Point is, if you want gunnery 3-up, you can be gunnery 3-up. If you want piloting 3-up, you can be piloting 3-up. If you want EW 4-up, you can do that. So this thing's stat line, well, it's like defensive stats aren't that great. It's actual gunnery piloting and EW are much better than you would think. React plus means you get a free reaction every turn. So that light anti-tank missile or the medium in one of the variants, that anti-tank missile is always going to have something it can do and always be a good choice. And like I said, you have arms for the reaction. The anti-tank missile is your predominant indirect weapon. There is one variant that picks up a guided mortar later on. Combat weapon means you're not completely defenseless, and the rocket pack is a decent option if you want to really leverage into something with high armor. The actual variant, the baseline variant, has a medium laser cannon, so an upgun version of what the 616 has. And I actually quite like this loadout. The ECM is cute, and you're likely enough to live long enough to use it. Um, and it's worth noting that with React Plus and an ECM, you can do some shenanigans there. You can, like, 
ECM. Um, just you can you can reaction with the ECM. Um, it's really cool when you have a free ECM defense action. Makes these things really annoying if you up use the ANN to up their piloting skill. There's some shenaniganry here, more so than with the 616 because of that ANN. The anti-tank version has a particle accelerator and upgrades to a medium anti-tank missile. Goes to limited ammo, though. Much like the 616, this is less a kill the tank and more a disable the tank option. Um, you know what? It's not bad. I, I could get on board with it. it I actually prefer the, the regular 219 over this. The assault has a medium rotary laser. The rotary laser, oh, and a shield. Um, so the shield makes this thing really durable. You use your ANN to go to piloting three up. The shield is a single free reroll every turn on that. On an armor eight model with hull structure four two, that's pretty good, guys. And the rotary laser is really good as a high accuracy weapon. Um, so an interesting thing is more a, a there's an interesting dynamic between the advanced and the precise traits and additional dice. The advanced and the precise traits are always a flat plus one, and they are always going to be there. They, and, and because of the way the attack works, that adds to the damage of the weapon. The extra die is generally worse, but has the potential to spike higher. So the 219 has less consistent damage but a wider range of potential damages because you're rolling more dice. There's more potential for a six in there. The laser cannon doesn't have that. The laser cannon is just going to give you flat bonuses. And in many cases, that laser cannon is going to give you a very consistent result. But that rotary laser can spike higher. The 219 support um, has a light anti tank, has, um, sorry, has a guided mortar on the baseline variant and drops the ECM. Again, I don't have a problem with this machine. I think it's perfectly serviceable. Um, it works. You have the React Plus to make that guided mortar useful. You have an anti-tank missile too. And you have a laser cannon for a direct engagement. The recon version is the weird one for me. Um, it has a rotary laser instead of a laser cannon, which is a very interesting difference. Comms, sensors 24, sensor boom target designator. Um, I'm just going to flat out say it. Um, I am not the biggest fan of this machine, although it is funny that there are some shenanigans you can do with this. Um, my favorite is you can target designate something and react plus with a free reaction on it. That's not a terribly common ability to be able to target designate your own thing and react for free. And because you're doing it to yourself, you actually don't need to roll for it and they can't jam it. Obviously, they can, they can jam the target designation action, but... It, you don't have to roll to give it to somebody, though. It's just like, oh, I target designate you. Okay. All done. And then, boom, here's your anti-tank missile going down range. I do wish this had the guided mortar as well, but eh, can't want them all. So the, the TLDR and the 219 is there's some shenanigans with React Plus and the ANN because of this. And mobility pack as a jet pack and airdrop. This is a more legit airdrop target than the 616 just because you're more durable and you have more up close and personal weapons. The 221 is a essentially an alternate version of the 616, but it's used by a flail. So a brain in a jar, much like the 219, it'll explode if it's disabled and it's used like a heavy trooper, kind of like a Jaguar or something like that. Um, so it has exactly the same stat line as the 616. The only difference is this thing adds an ANN, which is pretty good. And it's hull structure 4-2 instead of 3-3. Three, three. Okay. Um, see the 616 commentary here. Pretty much everything applies. There's no React Plus. The only bonus here is because you can ANN to a higher gun or your piloting skill, that gets accounted for. But on the whole, my commentary is pretty much the same as the other ones. Um, you have a guided mortar version. You have a really weird recon version that does and doesn't do everything I wish it would. Um, the assault version has a rotary laser and the anti-tank its job is to not really kill things. Interesting point here, there is not a command variant, although the recon does have the comms trait, so take that for what you will. You can make a commander out of this thing. Um, this is a much better, I think, mobility pack option than the 616, mostly because you have that ANN. All right, last of the frames, the 225. So this thing was first observed on Atlantis by Black Talon teams who thought it was a Special Forces unit. 
It's actually a recon unit that just happens to be a really good headhunter. All right. All of these are recon and strike, or recon and fire um, special forces, and then they add strike or fire support as needed. Walker hover 10, armor 7, hull structure 3 3. So this is faster than a 616, but with the same durability. Um, one action, gunnery piloting 4 up, EW 5 up, pretty standard. All the variants have a light laser cannon and a light combat weapon. So the light laser cannon is your generic, useful against pretty much everything to an extent, but doesn't hit super hard. They all have arms, agile, airdrop, ANN, stealth, and a jetpack. All right, so let's break this down here. The jetpack and stealth means this thing can actually hide and still jump out and do something effective. Not an especially common series of events, but doable. The fact that they are auxiliary is a little unfortunate, though. Airdrop does mean you can get this thing into position right off the bat without having to really worry about it. Agile keeps it alive a little bit longer than its stat line would suggest, and arms lets it react. Weapon loadout, light combat weapon for close combat, and a light laser cannon at ranged. Again, see the 616 and the 221 commentary. You only have one weapon. It's a decent weapon, but it doesn't excel at any one particular thing. It is very accurate, though, is its most notable point. Um, EW5 up goes to a 4 on the recon variant. Pretty standard stat line here, just high speed. Um, the baseline 225 has an ECM because all of these machines have an ECM and they're auxiliary. Um, I, all right, I'm going to flat out admit it. I don't know what to do with this thing. The whole, the whole variant, the whole machine. Just on the whole, I, I don't understand it. It doesn't feel like it's a good enough upgrade over a 616 or a 221. What, what are you getting? Now, I do think that part of this is not necessarily that it's bad, but it's just an undesirable role. I don't need this thing to fill a role, therefore it looks terrible. That doesn't mean it's bad, it just means it's not what I need. So keep that in mind. It is interesting to note that it almost always has an access to all of the special deployments. It can recon, it can, use, um, it can flank, it can use the recon one, which I'm forgetting its name, and it can airdrop. The only thing it can do is do the amphibious one. The anti-tank version, it's available on fire support, picks up a light anti-tank missile and loses the ECM. Um, I mean, it works. If you're going to run this thing, I think that's not a bad choice to throw one of these in there. I kind of like the ECM, though. The, the spammable ECM is kind of nice. The assault is the one that I think, if I was going to grab this thing, is the one I would pick, and that's because it has a shield. You know, you use the ANN to go to piloting three up, pop the shield, and you're reasonably durable here. You've still got all your offensive capability. Um, stealth in a jetpack makes it so you can just kind of pop out of nowhere. The recon version has that same sensors, comms, target designator. The difference here is that sensors 36, and that right there is the one thing that I think makes this thing stand out over the other recons. Sensors 36, you can sit back, you can hide behind a wall, you can use your sensor boom to pop up, target designate something, and unload you know, light anti-tank missiles on it or whatever. So I can get on board with that variant. Interestingly enough, with the upgrades here, there is no mobility upgrade or anything like that. You can upgrade as weapon to a medium rotary laser. It is considered a point upgrade. It's a stronger gun, it's got more dice, but it doesn't have precise, so it kind of is a wash. But the fact that you're rolling more dice spikes its potential a little better. So I could see it being an upgrade. Um, I think it's a perfectly reasonable choice. All right, almost done. Um, MHT-95. So the CEF uses hover tanks a fair bit. And the MHT-95 was designed in the interwar period between the War of the Alliance and the newest CEF invasion to fill um, to expand on the medium hover tank role. So a light hover tank is fast, but not as well armed. Heavy hover tanks are super slow and well armored. This is a nice middle ground. The MHT-95, there's only three variants. The, they are all strike and fire support, and they all move um, with hover six. Armor nine, hull structure five, three, two actions. Gunnery piloting EW446. And then weapon loadouts, they all have a linked turret medium rocket pack, a fast turret medium laser cannon, and a heavy machine gun. All of them do. Airdrop, jump jets three, and sensors 24 rounds out this thing's loadout. 
Um, the Sensors 24 is, I think, is a very interesting one because I'm not entirely sure why. Um, there is a couple variants where it makes sense. Apologies, the dog just stepped on something. So the Sensors 24, um, a couple of the variants have indirect weapons as their main gun. Sensors 24 lets them shoot at themselves without relying on somebody to forward observe for them, which is good because this thing is not cheap. Jump Jets 3 is very interesting because it lets you move over to any terrain 3 inches tall. And that's a lot of terrain if you really sit down and look at it. Um, unfortunately, it's a little bit slow, but good maneuverability. And it is airdroppable, so if you want this thing to start in almost the middle of the table, you can do that. Weapon loadout, you have a heavy machine gun. It's faster and auto, so it basically means it reacts for free. And it can react. Um, that's your anti-infantry option if somebody tries to get cute. The medium laser cannon anti-air. Again, it's laser cannon. You have decent accuracy. It hits reasonably hard. It is anti-air, so if somebody tries to get cute with aircraft, you can shoot it down. Medium laser cannons are pretty good at that. And the linked medium rocket pack on the turret is, I think, a very nice gun. Um, like I said in a lot of other videos, the link means that in many situations, it will act like a heavy, but be more accurate. The link lets you roll extra dice. Yeah, there's a chance that you don't get the, the extra, but there's also a chance you roll a six. So better potential, a little more swingy. Gunnery piloting four ups all pretty standard. Piloting four up on a tank of this hard helm, this heavy is pretty good. EW six up, this is not a electronic warfare machine. Um, two actions, armor nine hull structure five three means you're fairly durable. Variance wise, the baseline 95 is 25 points, has a medium railgun. This is my go-to variant. Uh, medium railgun, pretty good gun. It's got some of the uh, bonus traits that help its accuracy. You got your rocket pack, you got your medium laser. It's reasonably durable. You know what? I can get on board with the baseline 95. It is not cheap. That's its great weakness. And it has limited um, UAs. And those UAs tend to have some of the harder objectives. So got to be careful, but, you know, it's not a bad choice. Um, it's a really good secondary unit model. The assault version has a heavy grenade launcher. So this is where I mentioned that 24-inch sensor comes in. This can drop grenades on its own. Um, I think it's okay, although I still like the baseline more. And the support version has a medium artillery gun. I have a love-hate relationship with artillery guns. I love them aesthetically. I think they're terrible in-game. This is no exception. Uh, mostly because at sensors 24, it's kind of weirdly not able to cover its own um, ideal range. So you're going to be firing at things at suboptimal ranges. Last thing for one point, you can upgrade all of these things to have an ANN. I think that's a perfectly fine upgrade. I like it on the baseline 95. Making this thing piloting three up is really annoying. All right, closing things off, flail squads. Sorry, I'm going through this fairly fast. There's a lot of stuff in this box. The CEF upgrades their grill troopers to flails, and by upgrade, they take the brain out, stick them in a jar, and hardwire them into a machine. They are heavily armored infantry, and the Terranovans have been forced to use gears to fight them. All right, so this is an infantry unit. A couple things you have to know about infantry right off the bat. Infantry get a bonus in cover to their defense roll, and infantry can only take a maximum of two damage per attack, unless the weapon has the anti-infantry trait, all of which is very important. The baseline flail squad, all of these are general purpose strike fire sport. The baseline flail squad, all of these are infantry hover six, except for one at the end. So hover movement, very good. Armor five, hull structure four, two means these things act as trooper gears more often than not, but their um, damage is capped at two damage each. So they're guaranteed to take three shots down for the most part. Unless your opponent shoots a heavy machine gun at them, which can be useful, but often feels like a waste on the models that are firing. Gunnery 3-up, piloting 4-up, EW 6-up. These guys are fairly accurate and reasonably durable. Jetpack 4 trait across the board, and then the weapons vary a fair bit. So Jetpack 4, um, infantry, hull, um, hover, movement 6. Makes these things reasonably durable. Jetpack lets them jump up 4 inches. You can get up on buildings. Um, being only an inch tall, they are fairly easy to hide. Gunnery 3, that means they are fairly accurate, and when we get to their weapons, that'll make a little more sense. Piloting 4-up keeps them alive fairly often, and at Armor 5, Hull Structure 4-2, they act like a trooper gear more often than not, but have limited um, but can only take a limited amount of damage. 
The baseline variant has an infantry laser and a heavy machine, a heavy infantry laser and a heavy machine gun. These things actually hit decently hard for their weight class. Like I said, you're looking at a slightly less armored trooper gear. It still hits reasonably hard. It doesn't have the flexibility of weapons, but it does have the advantage of because it's infantry, it's only going to take two damage from each shot. Yes, I understand the argument of, well, you can always fire an anti-infantry gun at it, and that's true. Let me know how good it feels to take a Kodiak and fire a heavy machine gun at an infantry squad. The Kodiak is not happy about this. Yes, if it matters, it matters, but at the same time, that you could have done that with anything else. That Kodiak isn't justifying its added expense. It's also worth noting that these are gunnery 3 instead of 4. The mortar squad, instead of the infantry lasers, has an infantry mortar. Um, I think this is more cute than good. Um, the baseline variant here wins pretty well, hands down. The anti-tank one is the only one I think that gives it a run for its money, and it has an armor-piercing 2 anti-vehicle missile, which is really good for vehicle hunting at only 7 points, and they're with their limited damage potential. You know, a bunch of anti-tank flail squads isn't a bad roll. The interdiction squad has a infantry support weapon. Much like the mortar, I don't think this is terribly useful. Morgana flails. Um, the Morgana name in here is a reference to a Grell um, template. So the Grells have a bunch of templates. They're all named. There's like Isaac, Morgana, Jan, or Jan, I don't remember how to pronounce it. Um, things like that. And, and they're just temp they're templates, each one specializing in different things. Um, the Morgana is a special forces one. It's the, like, goes in and um, special forces machine uh, variant. Sorry. As such, it's one point faster in movement, which is pretty good. Has one point better electronic warfare. Okay. Picks up a light vibro blade with the anti-infantry trait. Now, a very interesting note here is that none of the flails actually have a melee weapon. Which kind of does matter. You get a, a melee weapon, light vibro blade, so reasonable especially when you're piloting four up agile brawler one and stealth so stealth means you can hide jetpack lets you get out of um, where you've been hiding brawler one on piloting four up on that melee weapon means it's actually an effective um, use of the of the vibro blade and agile keeps you alive this thing by itself will kill your opponent's entire infantry collection if let to do its own thing and at armor 5, it is reasonably durable to their return fire. You can upgrade all of these to have a light Panzerfaust, which I think is actually a pretty good buy in many situations. And you can downgrade to a team, which makes it hull structure 2-1. You're crippled in one shot, but it takes two to kill you. No other changes, and it's a point downgrade. I actually think that the team downgrade here is a pretty good look for a, a flail squad. Um, it takes it drops your durability by 30 33 percent but it drops your cost as well and you don't lose any of your offensive power so guys i apologize for the slightly long video but that hey this is dave if you like what we're doing here at what game now go ahead and click on one of the videos which should be on either side of me or click right in the middle and go ahead and subscribe to the channel don't forget to hit the bell once you subscribe so that you know when we have new videos Please go ahead and share us with your friends. Let everybody know that we're here. Thank you for watching and thank you for all of our subscribers already. And we look forward to bringing you more content every chance that we get.